Thailand has been uh, proclaimed as a country that has dealt with HIV quite well when it comes to injecting drug users. And if you look at the people there, HIV rates have uh, decreased uh, among antenatal clin clinics, uh, sex workers, but look at what happens to injecting drug users. All those years into the epidemic, the, big, the blue line, the numbers are continuously very, very high. So even though pragmatic uh, prevention efforts have been put in place for other populations, Thailand continues to basically watch as 60 to 70 percent of HIV drug users are becoming infected, city by city, town by town. Recently, Thai, uh, for World, a uh, World AIDS Day, December 1, uh, TTAC and uh, Human Rights Watch issued a report which, ba which basically says the following, none of that will be a surprise to us. Thai authorities have provided minimal support for harm reduction, few existing harm reduction programs are seriously undermined by government's ongoing repressive anti-drug campaigns, police regularly interfere with drug users' efforts to seek health care, and poli uh, police also uses possession of sterile syringes as presents or presence at methadone clinics as basis for harassment and uh, arrest. So taking that into account, when you look at the next slide, which shows how mediocre the coverage of harm reduction is in many of the countries uh, where uh, HIV is driven by drug users, that's not surprising. Basically, drug users are not uh, accessing services or those services are not uh, set up for them. None of those countries, again, where HIV is driven by drug users, have the coverage rate that would stop an HIV epidemic. And obviously it's not stopping the HIV epidemic. Let me move to, let me move to the US. Can we go back? One slide. Yes. Okay, so US in the global debate. All of you know there is a federal ban on funding of needle exchange. Now, what happens is that that ban is um, what's the word? exported to the rest of the world in the following manner. Uh, PEPFAR, which is the biggest funder of H uh, HIV prevention uh, development assistance uh, in the world, obviously complies with the U.S. federal regulations, which means that when the United States funds HIV prevention in Vietnam, in Russia, in Ukraine, in China, it cannot spend its money on drug use, uh, on, dr on, uh, on needle exchange. And basic, so basically what happens, they do not spend it on drug users because people are very concerned not to sort of upset the U.S. government. So $15 billion is being spent on HIV prevention globally. None of that is going for uh, assistance to needle exchange programs. Now what is happening is that U.S. government has graciously agreed that some of that money can go into methadone for HIV positive folks. So if you're HIV negative in Vietnam, one of the FEDFAR countries, U.S. government is not going to pay for your access to methadone. It will pay for it if you're already HIV positive. Figure that logic out. So U.S. is very active in drug control and, uh, arena and its opposition to harm reduction is, uh, is quite fierce, as you can imagine, and uh, they're very pushy about uh, making their, name, their views known. So this is a needle exchange program in Bucharest. This is what we would want for, uh, for all drug users who are in need of uh, services. This is a Roma uh, participant uh, in Bucharest. What we have instead is people shooting uh, outdoors with dirty needles and syringes and getting infected with HIV. Let me move on to methadone. Methadone is categorized as Schedule 1 drug that happened in 1961, um, which means that it has no medicinal purpose. Okay? All of you on methadone, that might be surprising to you. <laughs> So obviously, uh, the moment when methadone was uh, categorized that way, in 1961, um, that was, I mean, this clearly was not to the today time realities of 2005, 6, or 7. Now interestingly, INCB, the body that sort of uh, many countries get in trouble with when they do something that uh, would potentially violate conventions, 
Um, so there's nothing uh, to countries which uh, provide no substitution treatment. And basically sort of leaves that question uh, to discretion of number uh, of countries, which means that if the government doesn't want to provide substitution for its drug users, it's free not to do so. And there isn't any sort of significant push from any one side to change that. Okay, so what we have now is we're in the perpetual pilot phase. And as many of you working with substitution treatment throughout, uh, in the United States know, there is not enough substitution in the U.S., but that, uh, the situation in the U.S. basically does not compare to with the rest of the world, particularly developing countries. In Poland, where, uh, where I come from, 1,000 people are on methadone. 1,000 people. Uh, and uh, the estimated number of opiate users is 40,000. Uh, in Kyrgyzstan, Azerbaijan, Georgia, in all of those places, we continuously have people on method, 100 people on methadone, 200 people on methadone. So even though countries in principle uh, respond to some sort of pressure and make substitution available, they make it available to such ins insignificant and tiny amount of people that you, know, you can't really expect that this treatment is going to have any sort of impact. And then you have countries where substitution treatment is illegal, and that is in Russia. Uh, half, half a million plus opiate users and no substitution. And Russia is a little bit like the United States. Uh, it impacts um, its neighbors very, very much. So if there is no substitution in Russia, that means that all of the neighboring countries have sort of a lot of hesitation in introducing this, uh, this modality. Now, I want to talk for a minute about China. This is a substitution program. This is a substitution program in China. This is not a substitution program in prisons. <laughs> okay, let me make this clear. This is substitution program. This is methadone program in Beijing. And I think it's really important to sort of think about that because you know, very often when one looks at official documents, including UNODC, you will basically read a lot of praise for how well China is doing in rolling out its methadone programs. Well, this is what it's rolling out. Okay? So, and then we have sort of surprise comments, why is there only, why is there only 40% uptake? Or why people are dropping out after two months? They're dropping out because substitution programs in China are not at all set up in sort of respectful way, in harm reduction philosophy. They are very much set up as means of social control. 